Hello and welcome to episode 7 in the series on GPU programming. What we are going to cover in this episode is the usage of shared memory to improve the performance of our matrix multiplication algorithm by introducing a concept called tiling. As a reminder, this is what our matrix multiplication code from episode 2 looked like. Let's look at how is memory accessed in our kernel. The first thread takes the first row of matrix A and the first column of matrix B and loads them into the registers. If we were to start keeping track of how many times was each row and each column accessed, we can clearly see that we are actually reading them multiple times. And more precisely, the number of accesses is equal to the length of the side of our matrix. In order to reduce our global memory workload, we can utilize shared memory. This is a next big step in our CUDA journey, as this time we have to start thinking about what our whole blocks that are indicated with a purple color here, we'll be doing instead of just individual threads. We start by splitting our input matrices into tiles that are of the same shape as our blocks. Each thread in the block then loads the corresponding value in each input matrix into shared memory and proceeds with calculating a partial dot product but instead of reading the values from slow global memory, we read from fast shared memory instead. When we are done, we move our tiles and do the same thing to finalize calculating the dot product corresponding to each entry in the output matrix. This runs for each part of the output matrix. In the end, we have a significant reduction in loads from global memory. In our case, we managed to half it, but it highly depends on the shape of our matrices and the size of our tiles. Let's now go over the code that we will use to achieve this. We first need to initialize our tiles in shared memory. Then we calculate the row and column of the output element associated with the current thread. We save the thread indices to variables for ease of access later. And we create a variable that will store our dot product. Then we divide our input matrices to tiles. And we load the tiles from global to shared memory while performing a boundary check on them. Now, we have to synchronize our threads, since they are not guaranteed to execute all at the same time. The call to sync threads tells CUDA to wait until all threads in a block hit the synchronization point before we proceed with the next instruction. After we are sure that all of the variables are inside shared memory, we use them to calculate the part of our dot product for the output element and we synchronize our threads again, so that we don't overwrite any variables inside our shared memory while we are still working on them. After we finish, we proceed with calculating the next tiles, doing that until we have gone through all of the tiles inside our matrices. And finally, we save the result in our output matrix. We can now run our tiled matrix multiplication algorithm and compare its performance with the standard one that we've been using before. Notice that the scales are logarithmic, so the real differences are actually much higher than they appear on the graph. As a fun comparison, I decided to also profile the time it takes for the naive CPU version of matrix multiplication. It does not use any advanced techniques such as multi-threading and SIMD operations, but it can give you an overview on the scale of the improvement that we are getting by offloading this algorithm to the GPU. 
If we were to compare the ratios, standard matrix multiplication is around 20% slower than our tiled version. And the CPU version is, well, up to 15,000 times slower. And it's still profit only for the smallest matrices. This will be it for our introduction to shared memory. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, consider subscribing, leaving a like, and commenting for the love of the algorithm. And if you didn't, let me know why. See you in the next episode. Bye.